to another installment of North Dakota Hockey Central, your television home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Seinert. Coming up, we'll be joined by head coach Brad Berry, meet sophomore forward Zach Yan in the penalty box, and preview this weekend's matchup at second-ranked Denver. First, though, it's time for the latest episode of UND Hockey's web series, Through These Doors. This week, it's a sabermetric takeover as the crew looks at how stats and film analysis have changed how UND gets ready for game day. Pinto across the line, feeds on the left side, Blaisdell, drop to Connick, fires and scores! Johnny Taconic slap shot for his second goal of the season and a 5-0 North Dakota lead. Now to the left of the goal, Mashad plays it back for Kirsten on the near boards, sweeps it down into the corner, Mashad for Weatherby, he scores! Whoa, tic-tac-toe, a beautiful goal, and Jasper Weatherby's second of the season his second power play goal makes it two to one UND. Preparation yields success more times than not, and UND takes that motto to heart as conference play progresses. A business mindset begins to take shape, especially before a tough road series against rival Denver. I think uh, you know everyone knows we're uh, playing Denver. Those guys are a big rival of ours, and um, you know everyone's been uh, you know elevating practice, and it's been really good to see. Video analysis is an important method UND employs to ensure quality performance and optimal matchups. We go out there today, we're going to work on some concepts today. Let's make sure that we're sharp. We're not going that long, but let's make sure that we're sharp today. We we'll have a ton of team meetings, so you always have that side of it, but I think to break it down further, um, a lot of the guys like to watch their face-offs. Watch, uh, watch themselves, how can they get better, um, where were their mistakes, um, and just overall, I think you can always be improving and that's what the guys are trying to do and that's, that's our role is to help them become better in any way they can and if they get better, that's just gonna help the team that much more. Normally, um, we'll be getting ready for the game. Um, I'm mic'd up to the bench, I have a wire, or a microphone in my ear, speaker in my ear to Carl on the bench. And so we'll make sure that that's obviously working, ready to go for uh, anything that might come up, any questions. Um, I'm always looking at line changes for the other team. We're also charting, you know, I'm charting some face-off stuff for our guys. I'll have a chart up here and we're gonna look at draws, chart our guys just so that coaches have an idea on who's matching up well against who, and uh, Bryn's gonna be charting some D play and puck touches, so there's things going on besides just watching the lines, but I think our main, our main focus is the video side and making sure that, uh, you know, we're eyes in the sky, we're helping the team. The players see the video team as being key to their development on the ice. Everyone loves statistics these days, and um, I think that uh, statistics are great, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, video is, is a huge tool and being able to, uh, you know, kind of see what the coaches are seeing. And, you know, uh, Almer's been unbelievable with me in the face-off circle. Um, you know, we watch clips every week and uh, he has a pre-scout of, of what we're going to see uh, in the face-off circle. Um, you know, everyone here at UND does an unbelievable job with, uh, with the video. You obviously can watch video on yourself and on our team and how you can get better, but one of the things that I'll do with our centermen for the weekend um, is go through, we'll be have, we have a Denver game from a week ago, and I can watch their centermen. So I'll usually take the time to go through, watch their guys, see what they're doing on each side of the ice and in each zone of the ice, see if there's something I can pick up on that can help our guys 
Now I'll move on to number nine here, McClellan. Right now I already know he's got their best percentage, so I'll be watching him a little bit extra, and he takes a lot more draws. So with that information, now I can just take it and watch and look for anything that I see that can help, like I said, help our guys going into the weekend. He's unbelievable on the ice. Um, you know, such a good guy, and again, he's been around the game so long. Uh, he sees things that, you know, I don't even think of. So, um, you know, our relationship is, is, is awesome. And, um, you know, again, having him on the ice, uh, you know, with me. And he's always, always helping me with my game after practice, before practice in the video room. And uh, having a guy you can kind of lean on like that is, is, is really huge. Good stuff. Well done as always to Cassie Niles and the entire Through These Doors team. It's time now for a break, but when North Dakota Hockey Central returns, we'll recap the start of NCHC play and set the scene for a top 10 battle in the Rockies with head coach Brad Berry. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central. Time now for our weekly conversation with UND head coach Brad Berry, who joins us now from inside Ralph Engel Sad Arena. Brad, that building has treated you well this season, hasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's nice to know that you can get the result, uh, you know, uh, consistently in the first half of the season here, which is vitally important to get off to a good start. You remained a perfect 7-0-0 in the Ralph for the year after this weekend sweep of Miami, scoring 12 goals over those two games. In your mind, what keyed that offensive success against the Red Hawks? Yeah, I think just building momentum early in the season. Uh, you know, I thought we had a, had a good opening game against Manitoba. That uh, we, we had a lot of offense in that game that I think produced a little bit of confidence as far as with the puck. And uh, I think it carried over into Canisius and then in the subsequent games that followed. And uh, uh, it, it's a big deal just not having one line that can produce, but four lines that contribute uh, on a nightly basis, so that's going to be the key to consistency of trying to win games is having uh, you know four lines give you that uh, scoring by committee mentality. Right now you rank third in the country at over four goals per game. You finished 41st in that category last year. Does that range of jump offensively from one year to the next come as a bit of a surprise? Uh, I don't know if you would call it a surprise. I think it's something that we've uh, tried to work on through the summer on changing different things between you know, how we approach our practices and, and the games to the, the daily habits that we want to infuse in those practices and games and then adding to, adding uh, you know good young players to our group and plus the fact of having underclassmen uh, take a jump uh, Kyle Gucci Adams mishmash those type of players take a jump as upperclassmen now so I think it's a contribution of a few things going on We've talked this year about how a few new faces have helped boost your offense, but you've also hit on consistent line combinations that have really clicked. How big a factor has that improved chemistry been to your success so far? Yeah, I think it's been a big factor. Uh, you know, this year we've kind of stayed with uh, consistently with lines from game to game. We've tweaked them here and there a little bit, but I know last year when we had just a little bit over 500 record that we kind of bounced guys around a little bit, probably a little bit too much. Uh, but this year, giving the guys a little bit of flexibility and uh, a time to gel together as a line. So I think that that is a big factor of letting guys feel uncomfortable and, uh, and try to build that chemistry consistently on a game-to-game -game basis. On the back end, you had another strong defensive performance in the 7-1 win on Friday, although Miami had a little more offensive joy in game number two. What did you see in this series from a defensive standpoint, Brad? Yeah, you know what, I thought our, our guys did a good job, as, as, especially uh, Friday night, uh, as making sure we limited our time in the defensive zone. A lot, of ti a lot of situations arise where if you have the puck, you don't have to play in your end of the rink, and I thought we had the puck a lot on Friday night. 
Saturday, uh, the team made a push. Miami made a push there, and uh, you know they uh, they played a little bit more in our end of the rink, and we had to uh, play a little bit more defensive zone coverage. I thought we were loose in a couple different areas, but I thought we got better in the third period and tightened it up. Uh, we're going to have to do that this weekend against Denver for sure. When you went up 5-2 in the second period on Saturday, it felt like the game was more or less over, but the Red Hawks would fight back, get within one of the ends. What message do you give to the team after a game like this when you win, but you don't quite finish the way you want? Well, I think a lot of things go into it. First of all, the message is you got to play a 60-minute game. Like you got to put the, the, the pedal to the metal down and make sure that you go from the start drop of the puck to the, the, the end buzzer. But in that, I mean, there's momentum shifts in games. Like in the third period, we had to kill a five-minute major. They scored out right at the end of the five-minute major. So, you know, we took a few penalties, and that's part of the discipline side. I think we've been very good discipline-wise on limiting our penalties. We got to make sure that we continue to do that because that's that that's what gains momentum and uh, shifts in games. Jordan Kawaguchi had a personal six-point weekend with a goal and five primary assists. He was named the nation's third star for those efforts. He led your team in scoring last year as a sophomore, but even so, he's another upperclassman that has taken a big step forward this year. Yeah, he has, and you know when you can look at his, you know, his timeline here at North Dakota from a freshman to a sophomore to a junior, he's he's had a nice jump each and every year, and uh, and and now that's. You know, the last couple of years of his college career, that's what you expect as far as taking the team, uh, you know, uh, on his back. Uh, you could say a little bit offensively on that side of it. And, uh, you know, Jordan's been uh, unbelievable in practice and it just only uh, transfers into the games on what he's doing. Yeah, he's playing great, certainly right now. Looking ahead, you're now set to leave Grand Forks for the first of three big road trips over the next four weeks. You've taken care of business at home. How do you translate that success to the road? Well, it, it, it's playing with the same mentality, and you know, obviously, it's the same way you want to play on the road than you do at home. You don't have the last line change, uh, so matchups won't be as big as far as we're concerned because we don't have that luxury. Uh, but we do have the luxury of playing the same way with the same mentality. And you know, one of the things we talked about as a group is trying to improve our road record from last year. Uh, that's a big deal, and, and, and to do it in Denver would be, uh, would be probably uh, the best time to do it. Well, you just said it. Your first destination on this road trip is Magnus Arena. You get a Denver team that made the Frozen Four last year and has been ranked number one for the majority of this season. What has made this iteration of David Carl's team so successful? Well, I think, you know, it's, they're, they're very similar to our, our uh, organization or our, our team here in North Dakota is, you know, you got a lot of very good players that come into your group year after year and you want to try to make sure that you, 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 you play to the identity of your team and, and they have consistently from year to year and I feel we have too. And, you know, when you look at all the one goal games that we've played over the last couple of years, uh, that's what you're probably going to see again here. A very tight game that there's not gonna be a lot of space out there and uh, it's one of those things where uh, you know for the most part I thought we did a very good job against Denver last year of uh, you know possessing the puck and, and maintaining the play and uh, we got to make sure that we now finish plays uh, on top of what we did last year. Denver of course eliminated North Dakota from the postseason last year. How much do you address that in the league up to this series? Yeah for sure a little bit you know I know obviously it's a different year uh, but again it's it's one of those things where you know you have to refer to the past a little bit and and and, and kind of know that you know that was the end of our season last year and it, and it didn't end very well on on that side of it. We want to keep playing in the postseason and we want to make sure that there's motivation going forward here to uh, to know that we have to uh, finish the job. Yeah, well, it should be a phenomenal series in the Rockies. Thanks again for the time, Brad. Safe travels west. Best of luck against the Pioneers. Thanks, Alex. We're going to step away for a moment now, but when we come back, Zach Yan joins me in the penalty box for the glorious return of You Sit Must See TV on the way next. If you've been to a UND game at the Ralph before, you know that when the road team gets called for a penalty, the student section proceeds to yell, you sit at the guilty party and points to the penalty box. It's a charming chant and it's the inspiration for one of our favorite penalty box themed interview segments. This week on the season debut of You Sit, I'm joined by UND's Zach Yan to talk about life on the farm, family allegiances, and the overall intelligence of some of his teammates. Thank you. 
Zach Yon, senior forward, welcome to the penalty box. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me. In this setting over the last two years, you've had a couple teammates, not going to name names, but a couple teammates <laughs> have said that specifically you and Cole Smith are fake country guys. Here's your chance to respond. What would you, what would you say to that, to the boys who have said that? You know what, I could probably name who was saying that, but ru the rumors are not true. Me and Smitty are country to the bone. It's Real? Just, oh yeah. Why do you think they would call you fake? I think they're jealous. Oh. You grew up on a, on a chicken farm, right, if I'm correct? <laughs> like, it doesn't get more country than that. No. Well, how could you be called fake? I don't understand I don't know. that. Well, yeah, it was turkeys, but... Oh, so I'm apologize. No, no. Wrong, wrong fact. That's, 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 that's a bad offense. <laughs> what was the best part about growing up on a turkey farm? Um, there really wasn't a whole lot of good parts. It smelled. The turkeys were annoying. They're everywhere. They're always pecking at you. Yeah. But, uh... I don't know, you learn a lot of good life lessons about working hard, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a one positive <laughs> thing. Are you planning on taking over at some point when you go back home someday? Uh, I don't know, my grandpa was always kind of offering it to me and my uncle just took it over a couple years ago, yeah. so you can never rule it out, I guess. Okay. Family farm, gotta keep it in the family. Amen. <laughs> real, see, real country, not fake. <laughs> exactly. Casey, <laughs> terrible. You're an NCAA All-American scholar athlete. You've been an NCHC scholar athlete the last couple of years. Be honest, are you the smartest guy on this hockey team this season? Yeah. 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 I have yeah. to. Yep. I have yeah. to own that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say, for example, we're having a quiz bowl, and you're taking on other college hockey teams. You get three spots. You're the captain of the team. You get three spots. Who are the three guys on this team that you'd want on your quiz bowl team with you, representing Ooh. UND? I'd have to take Colton Pullman. He's good. He's just got a lot of random facts that he knows and a smart guy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Good pick. Oh, let's see. I'd probably take Peter Tomey too. He's another. He's another sharp guy. Knows a lot of stuff. I think. Uh, I think us three could. Uh, we could go far. Yeah. You got one spot left. I'll give you one more. One more. Ooh, let's see. Four man team. I don't know. The, the smarts kind of drop off after that. We're going to be delicate about this. <laughs> Who would maybe be on the other end of the spectrum? <laughs> Not saying these people aren't intelligent, but if you had, it's a draft and you're going through, who's maybe one of the last guys um, that gets selected? Not saying they're not intelligent. They're I just would, maybe not best in this situation. I would say Dixon would be mm. bottom few, maybe. Yeah. Great guy. Sorry, I got to, oh yeah, great guy. Great guy. Tremendous guy. Might have to throw out JBD. Oh. He's a... Uh, yeah, him and uh, Jasper, I guess, aren't the most intelligent guys, but... <laughs> <laughs> the truth is oozing out. Uh, you're that? asking it. So. Hey, that's, hey that's, that's why we ask. Well, now we know. Not doesn't mean they're not smart. Like, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe it does, actually. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> you have an interesting family dynamic, because your dad obviously played for the Gophers. Your mom, though, and your grandfather went to UND. Yep. When you picked UND, does that just mean that you just love your mom more than your dad? Is that kind of... Uh, I don't know. I better not answer that one. No comment. <laughs> how did your dad, how did that process go, like, when you kind of broke the news? No, he was actually really good about it. He was supportive for me either way. Yeah. You know, when I was starting to get recruited by colleges, he was just kind of wanted what's best for me, and this place was unbelievable, and he knew that, so it worked out. Yeah. Is he wearing green, or is he kind of still... First couple of years, it was, it was more black. It was more black, just neutral. <laughs> and then uh, he kind of eased his way into like a green hat and maybe like a green emblem. And now he's, yeah, now he's coming around. This will go. Took yeah. four years, but yeah. he's in. Well, <laughs> Took it'll, a while. Be, it'll be a fun Thanksgiving in the Yon household this <laughs> exactly. year. Exactly. It'll be a fun series to look forward to against yeah. the Gopes coming up. Cool. Absolutely. Well, good, Zach. Thanks so much for the time, buddy. Why don't you yeah, thank get you. out of the penalty box? <laughs> go study some mechanical engineering <laughs> or something. Zach Yon. <laughs> Not afraid to name names. Good stuff. Zach's a good sport. Now, whether or not he's still on speaking terms with Dixon, Jasper, or Jacob is yet to be determined. Next up on North Dakota Hockey Central, we're going from the penalty box to the Mile High City. Stay tuned for a look ahead at North Dakota's dates with Denver. Time now for this week's look at the national college hockey scene, starting with the latest USCHO.com poll. 
There is a new number one this week as Minnesota State has replaced Denver at the top after the Pios spent the last month in pole position. Minnesota State, who if you recall is the only team to beat UND this season, earned a hard fought road sweep at Michigan Tech, while DU could only manage a tie and a loss at now sixth ranked Minnesota Duluth. UMass meanwhile dropped from two to five after a three and one loss at unranked New Hampshire. UND moved up one place to number nine, one of three NCHC teams in the top 10 and five total in this week's poll after the return of Western Michigan. Speaking of the NCHC, the standings are pleasant viewing for North Dakota fans right now as they're the only perfect team in the conference thus far. Note though that St. Cloud and Omaha are yet to begin conference play, but that will change this weekend, one that doubles as the first full weekend in the nation's top college hockey conference. All eight teams are squaring off against each other with two involving a matchup of ranked teams. Omaha is coming off a split against a good Wisconsin squad while Western swept a home and home with Ferris State. It'll be interesting to see who comes out on top in that series in Kalamazoo. Then there's UND and Denver, two top 10 teams, 16 national titles between them. Add in the fact that Denver ended North Dakota's season last year, and it all adds up to one marquee early season series out in the Rockies. Yeah, they're a good team. We know they're offensively gifted, and they're also good uh, defensively. But uh, we're going to be tested, and we're really excited about it. Now that we're on Denver week, so it definitely a little salt in the wound, and we all those guys won, so we're just ready to get it going. Number nine, North Dakota against number two, DU, live from Magnus Arena. If you can't make the trip west, you can watch game one at 8 p.m. Central Time Friday on nchc.tv, followed by game two at eight on Saturday, right here on Midco SN. We're excited to partner with Altitude Sports to bring you that contest on Saturday nights. With that, it is time now to call things a wrap on this week's North Dakota Hockey Central. On behalf of everybody here at Midco SN, I'm Alex Seinert. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Thank you